If you don't go, I will. And me. And me. We'll go together. You try that. You'll be recaptured and back in the brig before you can say parsec. Hey everyone, this is Digital Charcuterie. My name is James. Thanks for stopping by. If you like Star Wars, Skeleton Crew, and more, hit that subscribe button. We talk about all that all the time on the channel. And I just watched episode three of Skeleton Crew and I want to talk about it. But first, I want to know what you guys thought of it in the comments down below. Let me know what you guys thought of Skeleton Crew episode three, a very interesting as an astrogation problem. Right off the bat, we were introduced to the parents of the young kids. And for me, this was the weakest part of the episode. It was one of the two weaker parts of the episode to me. I didn't really care much for the parents. I understand what's going on. But I think as the show went on, I understand why they started it with this uh, scene, why we saw the parents. The parents are very concerned that they left the planet. Why they leave the planet, we're obviously going to learn more and more about this planet at Aden that they live on. But beyond that, why do we care about the parents, right? If this is an Amblin film, as we keep hearing, you never really saw a lot of the parents in those films. They weren't the, the main focus in the 80s, right? It was all about the kids and the kids' adventures. But now, of course, we're getting the parents. But why of, Why do we get this aside from just seeing concerned parents? And that has to do with the secret of Ad Ad and what it is and who could be heading in the direction of Ad Ad and her learning the fates of other planets that were similar to Ad Ad. And if you have not seen the first two, three episodes now of Skeleton Crew, hit the pause button, go and watch them, come back here in just over an hour and uh, we'll have fun talking about it. So now, spoilery talk might get into it. There's not really a ton of spoilers to go into, but there's more so than the first two episodes. We're learning a lot more about the characters. I thought the kids are starting to become into their own. We're starting to learn more about the kids, more about the journey that they're on, more about who they're going to become. And I'm really curious to learn more of that. So obviously the episode starts with the parents' concern that the kids are gone. From there, we see Jod Nana Wood, Jude Law's character naming himself Jod Nana Wood, takes the kids and they escape prison. They get out of there, they go through the little market. We heard Jude Law talk about the market for a while now with the Jawas, we see all that, and they leave the market, they escape onto their ship, and the kids say, no, Jod, Nana Wood, we cannot leave without Smee, our trusty droid who saved our lives and is the only one that knows how to pilot this ship properly. And Jod says, absolutely not, he's a droid. I have no use for droids, I don't like droids. The kids, of course, convince him to go back for him, and while that happens, he runs into Alfred and Melina, recognizes him, but before that, my favorite moment so far in the series is he finds a battle droid, so he goes to this, like, it's old, like, I don't know, closet where they keep all the droids that they find. And one of them is an old battle droid. And when he turns it on, the battle droid says, did we win? And I was like, battle droids all day, all day, all day. Anyway, he finds Smee there. He turns on Smee, discovers that it's him. He has a rat in the eye. Neil said, don't forget to bring the little rat friend with you. So he finds Smee comes out, he's now chased by Alfred Molina's character and all these other characters, because Brutus, what a great character Brutus is. So Brutus is like, we gotta get him, he's about to go on trial, you know, track him down, shoot him down, gun him down. They go into hyperspace, destroy the port basically because of hyperspace, because they're chained in, they're getting gas, and and I think it's, uh, KB says, you're not supposed to go into hyperspeed when you're attached to something, and he does, and the whole port gets destroyed. Look, I still think this is a very nice shot show. Uh, the effects look great for the most part. I love seeing Neil. I think Neil is really, I think as much as I like Neil, and I thought I was going to like Neil going into it, he's growing on me even more as the show goes on. Like, it's not like a force, like, I'm going to like Neil. It's like, a, I genuinely am like, oh, I, I think I like this kid, like this blue elephant character. I'm kind of enjoying Neil quite a bit. Uh, I, I think the kids are actually better actors than, than the parents, uh, than the actors playing their parents so far in this one, but we'll see where that goes. We'll see what's going to happen there. But along the way, we learn that the kids tell Jod Nana Wood that they're from Ad Adden, and he's kind of in disbelief about it, which everyone has been the whole series. Like, what is up with Ad Adden? So he says he's going to meet up with an old friend. He doesn't quite trust his friend. They might stab him in the back. They meet the friend. The friend is like this owl-cat hybrid thing. Loved it. Reminded me of Clash of the Titans. Absolutely loved this little character called Kim, just flying around like, oh, look at me, I'm Kim. I'm... But she's, she's like smart, whimsical and has the knowledge on the database of all the known planets. And the kids are like, wow, there's a thousand planets and there's way more than that, obviously. So you understand that they've kind of been isolated in their home world, so much so 
that they've heard about Coruscant and Alderaan, but have no knowledge that Alderaan has been destroyed. So there's a big secrecy around their planet that not only is the planet hidden from the rest of the universe, but the rest of the universe is hidden from this planet, so to speak, as well. And it kind of gives some insights into how the, the life works, and you'll learn a little bit more as the series, as the show goes on, about what they might be doing, how everyone is always kind of in line for certain jobs in this planet, and what could the ultimate thing be, and maybe it's that this planet creates money, manufactures uh, money for the galaxy, and that's what they want, they're, they're a treasure trove for the whole universe if it, they were to get caught. I think there's going to be a little bit more to it than that, but well, that's a story for another day right now. In this time, though, from Kim, we learn that Jod Nana Wood, Jude Law Jod Nana Wood, is not Jod Nana Wood, but he's Crimson Jack. Crimson Jack, of course, a character from Old Legends, from the comics, 1977, goes all, he dates all the way back 50 years almost to those comics where Crimson Jack made his debut. And we learn that that's the name that Kim knows him by. And they say, who's Crimson Jack? And he's like, don't even worry about it. So they can talk to him like he's John Nana Wood. Kim calls him Crimson Jack and he's a scoundrel and he can't be trusted, which I think is something that we all watching the show believe. But these kids are kids and they are naive and they don't see him for that. They don't see him for who he is truly. Or maybe they do. Maybe they see something that someone like Kim, that other pirates and whatnot would not see him for. But Kim gives the information that there's Old Republic at play here, that uh, that Ad Adin is like ancient and it's part of uh, this group of planets that have been kind of like erased from the galaxy. Kind of like just like they don't exist because they're Old Republic, but all but one of them was destroyed. The planets were wiped out all of them were wiped out except for at at why and how it survived is unknown but this gives you more of a reason why the parents in that first ep uh, first scene now were so concerned because the planet risks now being destroyed so you understand that they're not just concerned for the treasure for their kids they're concerned for the planet as a whole now so that makes sense why we got that scene at the beginning so you learn that and you're like okay this kids i still don't feel the gravity of the situation because again they are kids and we got some really great kid moments in this one too with fern when jod nana wood is i'm gonna keep saying jod nana wood by the way when jod nana wood is like you guys need to get some sleep and she goes i'm not even tired and just cut to her asleep we get like character growth with kb we get to learn a lot more about kb right from the beginning with her parents talking about how she you know they're worried about her health so she's born with something and she has like the lobot ism about her they mentioned that she was kind of inspired by lobot so you get that to serve like you know she needs this maybe to survive she's smarter than everybody else she has documents kind of ingested into her because she is part robot she's ai in a sense so you learn a little bit more about that neil's still neil he gets to pilot the ship pretty poorly which was a lot of fun but then there is whim and whim wants to fly the ship and jod's like no he gets to be in the gunner seat with fern and he's like i got the shot and fern says no no that was my shot and earlier in the previous episode he wanted to captain the ship and fern said no i'm going to captain it wim always seems to be a step behind everyone he's never the one that's chosen and i think he's the one whose journey is going to matter the most by the end john not the one notwithstanding but with with the kids i think it's his story is going to be the one that we're going to see evolve i think you know he wants to be a jedi and he idolizes the jedi so greatly I don't know if they're going to make him force sensitive, which kind of would be cheap and whatnot, but th that might be the path they're going on. I think we're going to get whim is going to become something greater here. And I think by the end of this series, he's going to get his due. He's going to be in the spotlight. He's going to take center stage and have a powerful moment, whether that is wielding the force or not, or just saving the day or being the one to inspire hope within Jod Nana Wood. Something as big is happening with Wim, and they're building it up by him not getting the opportunity that he so desires as in these first few episodes. But we've still got, you know, five to go, so it could go anywhere. But that's where I believe right now that we're heading with Wim is on those directions. As far as Jod Nana Wood goes now, he claims that, you know, Kim has now stabbed him in the back like he said that she might do. The kids don't fully trust him. He doesn't know how to deal with it now. And he says, look, he might not be a Jedi. This is the first time he's kind of, he's come clean. No, we haven't known him for that long, but he's like, I never said I was a Jedi. I think he can still use a force. I think all the force stuff he was doing was legit, but I don't think he's a full Jedi. I still think he might be, if you see my video on this, I did one a little while ago, who is John Nanda Wood? I think he might be uh, a son or a relative or something of a former Jedi. And he's kind of 
been not really training but understands it and has seen it being used and he knows how to manipulate the force to do it the things he desires which is how he got ahead of, in piracy and i think he wouldn't have sort of succeed. there's a whole, the whole thing's going on there but but that's besides the point is he says he's not really he never really claimed to be a jedi but he says i'll work with you and get you home i want my reward and then you help me get on my way and i think you know that's where the story is going now and then it ends with them kind of heading off into into deep space and i i loved it I just thought, I just think that this show is just so much fun. Like it's just, it's inconsequential. I, I think that's, the, I think that's the, the, to its detriment also, right? Is that there's nothing grand here. It's like, it's just like a nice little side story in the Star Wars universe. And it's nice. It is nice. And I think if Star Wars itself was in a better spot, this show would be elevated by that. But because it's not, it's kind of like, you know, I could see people not really wanting to get into it. And that's maybe why the ratings aren't so high. But I just thought it was a, it's a really fun show, really good show. These kids are on an adventure with this maybe Jedi, maybe not Jedi. You know, you have a droid. Uh, Smee, Smee is also kind of becoming someone. I'm like, I'm really enjoying, enjoying this droid. I'm really enjoying where this character is going and learning more about it. So, I look, I really thought this was a fun episode. I thought it did really well. I thought that the groundwork is laid for more fun stuff to happen. The characters are starting to become characters. We're learning a lot more about them, which is exciting, which is good, which is what you want in this. The episode lengths, I have no problem with them. I'm enjoying the short episodes lengths. You know, I've been doing the Dune reviews and whatnot, and like that's like a long series, and Penguin was long. I love Love them, don't get me wrong. But sometimes, I, you know, when, when I'm watching multiple shows a week, I'm old. I have a two-year-old. I, I really want to go to sleep early. <laughs> so it was nice to have it. And it felt, but it did feel complete. I felt like we got the episode. And I'm really curious to see more from Kim and what Kim's going to do going forward now. Because she's like, you won't believe, you know, when the X-Wing pilot who was who was chasing John Anna Wood off of her moon, said, where are you going? She's like, you wouldn't believe me where these kids are from. And it's at Adden. And there's something big about at Adden. And at Ad Adden now is, 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 for lack of a better phrase, it's on the map. It is on the radar of the New Republic of the Pirates. And, and yeah, all the fears of the parents in that first scene will be coming realized very soon. And I think it's a lot of fun, and I really liked it. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Do you like it? Are you looking forward to more? I can't wait for the next episode. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for spending part of your day with me. I really appreciate it. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. And until next time, may the force of others be with you.